Whilst Elegoo have now trumped this feature slightly, I wanted to just give you a quick video showing how to create RERF tests on all Anycubic printers, since they haven't provided any clear instructions on how to do this in the years the feature has been available. I figured I may as well show you. So hi, I'm Ross, and this is Fohammer Videos. So the point of the Resin Exposure Rangefinder or RERF feature is simple. It allows you to perform eight separate exposure time tests on a single print. And the value here should be clear. Do you want to run an exposure test eight times sequentially taking hours, or do you want all eight of the results at once? You can have the latter quite easily, but there are some hoops to jump through. Ah, typical Anycubic. But thankfully the way this works is, well, it's quite simple when you understand it. The printer will expose your base or bottom layers of your prints normally so that they can all adhere. But when it comes to your normal layers, the plate lowers and each layer is exposed for different amounts of time when you set this up right. If you look at the screen without the VAT on, you can actually see the models disappear sequentially because they're exposed for different amounts of time. Now, yes, this does also mean that each model also has sequentially larger weight before lift times, but honestly, for a good 90% of us, if not more, the results here are more than good enough to print with and are far more than good enough to get started. If you want to dial in your printer further beyond this, feel free. Channels like Dennis Wang, J3D Tech, and Geek Detour are some of my favorites for some of the more advanced testing. And the guys from Table Flip Foundry who make the cones of calibration really know their stuff too. I'm all about getting you started fast. So anyway, Please follow all of the following steps, all of them. Not only is this test not explained well by any cubic, it's also a little janky. Much of what I'm about to go through is just to avoid having a test that just doesn't work for no particular reason. So here we go. When you get your Anycubic printer, you'll have a file on the USB drive called RERF something. This may have extra characters in the file name. It may have a variety of suffixes after the dot. It may have underscores between the letters, but whatever it is, this is the RERF file, which was provided by any cubic. The issue with this is that the printed model may not be the model that you want to use for an exposure test. And also I've seen it several times where the models in the test they give you are numbered out of sequence from how the printer actually exposes them. But this file you get is one that you should not delete, overwrite, or rename. Now, I always like to make a backup copy of my USB drive files on my computer before I do anything else with the printer. But the point is, the file name of the RERF test that you get on the USB drive is critically important for that printer because they can and do change slightly between models. Next, you want to open the Anycubic slicer. You can use the version that's on the USB drive and it may ask you to update it when you first launch the app. And you can usually do that, but if after everything else you do, this test still doesn't work, you may actually wanna revert back to the version of the app that came on the USB drive and not update it. I told you it was janky. And you may also want to use Chitubox or Lychee, but for the sake of just getting this test to work, please just don't, just use any cubic slicer. If you do and then struggle to copy your settings from any cubic slicer to Chitubox or Lychee, please watch my video on the best slicer settings. That should make it obvious what each of the settings does so you can interpret what the any cubic versions are and then translate them across. But once you have this installed, you then need to import the model that you want to use for the exposure test. So do that. Once done, make seven copies of it and lay them out evenly as though the plate has a two by four grid. Now, you need to imagine this grid on your plate and evenly space the models because if any of them overlap these invisible grid lines the test just it just once again it will not work and you can use any model you like so long as no part of it crosses these lines be that a flat exposure test the cones of calibration or the actual model you want to print if it's small enough in a perfect world, any cubic would actually release a grid STL, which is the size of each build plate that you could use as a template and then delete it before you slice the file. But resin printing is still far from a perfect world. And as for your slicer settings here, well, the only thing that this test affects is your normal layer exposure time. Everything else will remain the same for the print. But what you actually set your normal layer exposure time to is key to how this test runs. 
because whatever you set that to in here will be the exposure time for the first of the eight tested models. Each of the rest of them will be exposed for 0.25 seconds longer than the last. Now to keep this simple, I like to start with one second, and then I know that the next will be 1.25, then 1.5, 1.75, and so on for the eight tests, which should finish at 2.75 seconds for the last one. But depending on your layer thickness or resin type, you may wanna start higher or even sometimes lower. Just remember that the exposure time set in the slicer is for your first model only. So whatever you start with, do some quick math to determine what the rest of the exposure times will be. So once we've sliced it, we now have to save the file. And this can sometimes be as simple as calling it RERF dot whatever the file extension is for your printer. But sometimes these letters have underscores between them and sometimes the file names have extra characters after. Depending on your printer, sometimes these changes matter, sometimes they don't. Like I said, janky. So what I like to do is make a copy of the original RERF file I got somewhere else on my PC. Then on the USB drive, I'll overwrite the RERF file that any cubic sent with the one I just sliced using the new models that I chose. Typically, this would be on the root of your USB drive, but wherever any cubic put theirs on your USB drive should work. If not, put it in the root again janky. Now you can load this into your printer. I've never tried doing this via Wi-Fi, so I'll stick with USB just to remove another potentially breaking variable. But before you click print, I would test it. So remove your VAT and remove your build plate and put the lid back over so you aren't directly looking at the UV light. Now just print this RERF file as you would any normal file. It should be that simple. Should be. But once it's printing, keep an eye on the print. Without the print bed and the vat in place, you can see the shapes of each layer on the screen. Now remember, you will have several base layers and perhaps some transition layers that will show up first. These will not be affected by the RERF test and should all expose for the same amount of time. But after those have shown, you should then start to see your normal layers appear on the screen. They'll flash up and disappear because you're only showing them for a few seconds, if that. And each should disappear in sequence with a 0.25 second gap between them. And by watching this, you can also determine the correct order for your exposure times. The one that disappears first will be the shortest and the one that disappears last will be the longest exposed print. So make a note of this somewhere because I'm constantly forgetting the order. And remember, if some of your tested files have failed or peeled layers, you'll also need to clean the vat before you do the next test. Now you know how it works and the order things are printed in, you can stop this test, put your vat and plate back in and do this test with resin in the tank. Now, once it's complete, I recommend washing the whole build plate with the models attached so you can remember the actual order. This is the only time I recommend washing models that are still attached to the build plate. I would typically suggest you remove them all before washing. But by doing this, you can remember what order they're in. Just be aware as you look at the plate, you've flipped it from the order they were on the screen. So compensate for this when you work out which model is for which exposure time. So the back right corner on the screen, for example, will be the bottom right corner of the plate, etc. But that's it. You've now quickly done multiple exposure tests for the exact test or model you wanted. Now, at the time of recording this, I've no idea how valuable this video will be in the long run because I, well, I say, I was about to say expect. I hope that any cubic give us more control of this test now that Elegoo has trumped it by giving us a more controllable version of this in their Saturn IV and Mars V Ultra printers. Now, I'll be covering those in a separate video to show you how that one works too. But did you find this one helpful? Let me know in the comments, and if you can think of a way that brands can make exposure testing easier for users, let me know that too. Until next time, thanks for watching and thanks to our members for supporting us each month. If this is helpful stuff and you want to support the channel, please check out all of our affiliate links below this video. Using them before you make your purchase from any of the listed locations makes us a commission at no cost to you. Thanks again. Until next time, when I go driving, I stay in my lane. Fohammer out.